right, let's jump into video one for chapter 15. Chapter 15 goes over volume, and we're going to start, this covers two sections, volume of cylinders and volume of cones, okay? So let's think back to what we already know about the formula for the volume of prisms, okay? Back in chapter nine, we learned that for any prism, we could find that volume by taking the area of the base times the height. Right? We looked at pictures and did lots of practice examples like this where it might have a triangle base and then times the height. A square base times the height. Any kind of base times the height of the prism. But we also talked about how that height might not be going up and down. The height might be going this way if the prism's kind of laying on its side. Okay, so now let's jump ahead and look at cylinders and cones. Okay, A cylinder is just like a prism, but it has a circle for the base. So here I would be looking at capital B would be a circle, and then I still have the height, like the height of the can, right? When we did cylinders in chapter 9, we looked at cans a lot. So let's think about the formula for this, for a cylinder. So volume is still going to be capital B times H. But now I, since I know that my base is a circle, that's just going to be area of a circle. So a lot of people, again, say pi r squared or we often said radius times radius times pi. So that's it. If I can find the area of the circle and then multiply it by the height, I'll have the volume of the whole prism. So let's do a couple examples. Here, I'm gonna write my formula down, and I'm gonna go ahead and put in radius times radius times pi for capital B. So r times r times pi, and then that's gonna be multiplied by the height. So for this example, my radius is three, 3 times 3 times 3.14 times a height of 6. And I got an answer of this. And then just remember that we're talking about volume, so it's going to be cubic units. Okay? All right, how about the next one? Same thing, but careful here because they give me the diameter is 6, so just pay attention and make sure you're using the radius. Right? If you need to cut the diameter in half to get the radius, do that. So volume is radius times radius times pi times the height. So again, I have a radius of 3, just like the last one, pi, and then this one has a height of 18. And when I type that in, I got, you can type it in and check with me, I got that. Volume, so cubic meters. All right, so let's go ahead and write down the formula again. You're going to do these two right now and then check. So radius times radius times pi times the height. So go ahead and finish both of these and then hit play when you're ready to check your answers. All right, here's my base. So that's 10 times 10 times pi times the height of 16. And this would be four times four times pi times the height of 12. All right, let's move on. Example two here is gonna have us working backwards. So we're gonna use the formula and work backwards to find the radius, okay? Well, we know our formula. Radius times radius times pi times the height. And they're giving me the height, okay? So they're gonna give me the height and the volume. I'm gonna know this and I'm gonna know this and I'm solving to figure out what the radius is. So let's write down everything we know. Volume is 30144. And that's equal to radius times radius times pi times the height. Radius times radius times pi times the height of 6. Okay? So since I'm trying to solve for the radius, i got to cancel everything else out. So what I'm going to actually do is divide right here. I'm going to divide by pi and the 6. Okay? I can do pi times 6. All right, you can see I typed in 6 times pi, and that was 18.84. And I'm going to cancel that out by dividing by 18.84 on both sides. Okay, so now I still have this r squared to bring down, r times r, or r squared. And when I type this in, I get that r squared is equal to 16. So we learned in chapter 14 that we could either, we either know our multiplication facts here, or we could take the square root of both sides, right? If I'm solving for the radius, I would need to take the square root of both sides, and I get that the radius is equal to four, OK? 
okay? Because four times four gives me 16. So I started with my formula, plugged in the things they gave me, plugged in volume, plugged in the height, and then I worked that out, solved for the, the variable, solved for the radius, okay? Let's do another one. So for the page, let's do this one where we are actually looking at this one here. It says the volume is 10,000 pi, okay? So I just want to point out, because this one's a little strange with that pi in there. All right. So let's write down our formula again. Volume is capital B times H. Uh, it looks like I'm looking for H, but I do know the radius here. The radius would be 16. So let's go ahead and find B, because I know I'm going to need to put B in here. So I'm going to just type into my calculator 16 times 16 is 256 times pi. Well, without actually typing this in, if I just write down 256 times pi this way, you'll notice that's actually helpful because the pi's are going to cancel out. I'll show you. So here's the volume is equal to capital B times H. Well, the volume is 10,000 pi. The B, capital B, is 256, or 16 times 16 times pi. Oops, 256 pi times the height. Well, you'll notice that the pi on this side cancels out with the pi on this side. So it actually saves you a little bit of work, just leaving that pi right in there. And then all I have to do is divide by 256, and I'll get H. So I did that. And I got that H is equal to 39.06. And we're talking about inches here, okay? And you can always take your answers and plug them right back in, right? You can work this back out and make sure that you get 10,000 times pi for your volume, okay? So these two you're going to actually do. We can set up the first one, and then I'll let you finish and work those out. Here, we're going to be looking for the height. So we're going to be trying to solve for H. So I'm going to write my formula down again, capital B times H. These ones are even a little easier. Looks like my number here says, it's hard to read, but that's a 250. So the volume is 250. I'm going to have to find B, capital B, because I know I need to plug that in here. So it looks like I have a radius of 4. So 4 times 4 times pi, and that gave me 50.24. So 50.24 is capital B, and then times the height, okay? So finish solving it here for H. All right, you've got this one to finish, and then also number 15 here. Finish and check both of those. All right, if you're ready to check these, I just finished solving for H here. And then on this one, I kind of took a little shortcut, and I said, okay, I'm going to have to take my volume and divide it by the height. And I know that's going to give me B, capital B. So then I set it up and said, all right, if I know what B is, that's radius times radius times pi. So then I divided both sides by pi, and then I took the square root. I kept working it out to get R by itself. Okay? Again, plug these back in and check it to make sure it works. All right, let's go on to example three, where we're looking at cones. Okay? So we said our formula for a cone was very similar. Except for now, we're going to do capital B times H and divide it by 3. Okay, so again, I'll do a couple and then you do a couple to check. So volume is equal to radius times radius times pi. That's my capital B times the height. And it's all going to get divided by 3. So I can go ahead and just type in 9 times 9 times pi times the height of 16. Get that answer. And then divide it by 3. And I get this. Remember, it's volume, so cubic meters. All right, let's do one more. Careful here. Notice that they're giving me the diameter. So you're going to have to think and say, oops, hang on. The radius that I need is 8. So 8 times 8 times pi. That gives you the area of the circle base times the height of 10. And then all of that. I guess I can put 10 here. All of that divided by 3. And for this one, I got this answer. And it would be centimeters cubed. Okay? So you have two more.
go ahead and do both of these. Pause while you work them out and then hit play when you're ready to check. All right, you can see I did four times four times pi times i to 12 divided by three. And uh, I had to get the radius here of five and a half. So five and a half times five and a half times pi times the height and then divide that by three. And we got both of those. All right, so example four, this last section down here, is again working backwards. So it's using the formula to work backwards uh, to solve for either the radius or the height. So I'll do one of each, and then you've got one of each left there as practice. I know these copies are really hard to see. All right, number 16 here. I know these take a lot of work, so we'll try to stay organized. I'm going to write my formula down, okay? Capital B times H divided by 3. And I see that they give me the radius. Well, the radius would be 5, so I know I can find capital B. So I'm just going to go and do that quick. 5 times 5 times pi, and I get 78.5, okay? So now let's go back here. <clears throat> the volume is 225, and I'm going to just plug in everything I know. The volume is 225. Capital B is 78.5 times H and divided by 3, okay? So now we have a couple options. I think the easiest thing to do is to simplify this before I do anything else, right? I'm just going to type in 78.5 divided by 3 to see what I get. You can see I've typed it in here. So all of this in the orange circle is 26.16. So I'm going to divide everything by 26.16 or 17 on both sides. And then this will all cancel out and I'll get H by itself. So I type that in and I got that H is, when I round it, 8.6. Okay. All right. So let's try one down here where we're looking for the radius. All right, so again, start with your formula. I'm going to switch colors so we know where we are. So volume equals radius times radius times pi times the height, and all that gets divided by 3. Okay? Well, I do know that the volume is 938, 938. Wonderful. Equals radius times radius times pi times the height, all divided by 3. So it might be easiest, and one strategy, is to get rid of this dividing by 3 so that I don't have that giant fraction anymore. So I'm going to multiply by 3 on both sides. And then those 3s will cancel over here. Okay? And I also know that my uh, height is 4.7, so I'm going to fill that in as well. Okay, so I've put in all the information I have, the volume, the height, and I'm going to cancel out those 3s and then rewrite it. So it looks like I get... 2814 equals radius times radius times pi. Then I can see I'm going to have to divide by 3.14 or divide by pi on both sides. And I did that and I got that radius squared is equal to 190. Okay, and then think back to chapter 14. If I'm trying to get r by itself, I would need to do the square root of both of these. And let's type that in. The square root of 190, 13.78. Or that would round to 13.8 centimeters. So I want you to set up the formula and try to solve for both of these. In this one, we're looking for D, the diameter. And in this one, we're looking for H, the height. Okay, so we know we can start with the formula. Uh, capital B times H divided by 3, or you could write radius times radius times pi times the height divided by 3. So see if you can plug in the volume, plug in the height, and work your way backwards to the radius here. Okay, and then same thing here. Use your formula, plug in the volume, plug in capital B. You can find capital B because you have the radius, and solve this one for height. So here's our answers. There's more than one way you could show the work for these. Um, so we'll go over more examples in class. You, yours might look a little different, uh, but we should be able to get to the radius and the height.